something referencing. It is fun. Can I get a yay? yay. Oh, no, no. Enthusiasm, please. Can I get yay. a yay? Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, online students. My name is Ms. Bianca van Rainsberg, and I will be accompanying you on this journey called referencing. It is more fun than it sounds, I promise you. Um, but I'm going to put off my camera now and then just share my screen. So if at any start, um, instance you can't hear me, please just speak up and then we can adjust the settings here. But again, welcome to Stadio. Welcome on this journey and let's begin. Alrighty, can I get one more? Yay. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yay. Oh, Yay. 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 <laughs> Referencing is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, you're not doing it right. That's true. OK, let's just share my screen. Ah, oh, yes, sweeties. Put away, otherwise I'm going to eat it. Alrighty, OK, so I'm going to talk both online and to you guys here. So first of all, to you guys, welcome again. I hope you enjoy your journey at Stadio, that it is truly a fabulous experience. Um, you won't be seeing me in classes. I only lecture a second and third years. But if you have any questions with regards to referencing, you will see my email address on Canvas. You can just type in the Anka van Rensburg and then you will find my information as well. If you have any questions with regards to referencing, please don't hesitate to ask. Because if you get it right the first time, then you don't have to study it again. Now, with referencing, um, whom of you have ever heard of APA style or Harvard style? All right. So here at Stadio, we use adaptive um, Harvard style. It is on Canvas. I'm going to show you where to download it. Um, so everything you will see here, you will receive the presentation as well. So what are we going to do today? I'm going to ask you to take out your phones quickly, and then we're going to have a small introduction, not now, during introduction, online students as well. Then I'm going to show you, okay, so I tend to talk very fast, so if I'm going, you just say, whoa, okay? <laughs> okay, whoa, I will go slower. Okay, second up, I'm going to show you where to find your reference guide if you don't have it already or downloaded it already. This is going to become your new best friend here at Stadio. You're going to eat with it. You're going to take it to bed with you. Hopefully not shower with it. But until you understand everything that is in this document, you're not letting it go. Fish, can I get a yes? yes? There we go. And then we're going to look at some terminology like plagiarism, um, referencing, and then in-text referencing. And our main focal point today will be how to master referencing. Because it's not high school anymore, you're not going to only give us a reference list at the end. You need to make use of in-text references per question for your assignments. Because otherwise, you could have just given me this is a third-year textbook. You could have just given me the textbook with your assignment. I want to know where exactly did you get the information, and obviously you don't. Please do not plagiarize. But we're going to get to that. Everybody okay with what we're going to do? Everybody happy? Understand? Let's do it. So take out those lovely phones or just think back, close your eyes and reminisce about the very long vacation you guys had. Did some of you travel? Take that perfect selfie. Something you ate. Whom of you are foodies? Love food. There we go. A few hands on our students. How about you? Are I you like chicken. Kids? There we go. <laughs> like it. All right. So whom of you take pictures of your food before you eat it? Mm. Whom of you took a picture of that beautiful sunset when you went to the beach when we were allowed to go to the beach? Or that beautiful picture of you and your significant other? I can that you're too young for that. Okay, so typically, what do we do if we put, take these beautiful pictures? Maybe a selfie, somebody took it for you. We upload it to social media because, we yes, we like to brag about where we went to, what we're eating, what we're doing. So take me through the steps. So you take the perfect selfie or perfect kiki. I prefer to call it a kiki. What do you do then? You upload it, so you choose a social media site. Which social media sites do you guys use? Instagram. Okay, Instagram. What else? Any Twitter fans? I never understood Twitter, but okay. Giving away my age. Facebook, more for the parents. Some of you actually still use Facebook? Fabulous. Okay, what other social media sites do you make use of? TikTok. TikTok? Isn't that just for videos? No. Mm, okay, okay. 
So you decided upon a platform to use, now you're going to post it. But do you just post a picture or the video, or do you write some sort of caption? No, what type of caption do we use? Would we use, <laughs> sorry? What did you say? Oh, never mind. All right, so maybe your favorite song, the lyrics of your song, of a song. Maybe a nice quote. Who of you actually Googled Instagram movie quotes if you want to post a picture? Yes. Okay, so we have that. Then we add a few hashtags. Who likes hashtags? Oh, please, if you're in the marketing department or anything with marketing, please raise your hand now because I need to raise your hand for you. You love hashtags. There we go. And then we actually post it. But what do we do with that content? Can we just write the song lyrics or just a quote? Or do we need to give some um, recognition to the person who actually took the picture or whose quote it is, the author of this quote, the author of this song? So maybe, what's your favorite song? Uh, that's a okay, name a song, any song. Um, I can't think of okay, one. give me a song. Sweater Weather. Bob. What? Sweater Weather, the neighbor. Yeah. Sweater Weather from? The neighborhood. Neighborhood. All right, to see how old I am. Okay, so typically you chose some of the lyrics you posted on Instagram, will you include the artist's name? Yeah. To give them some sort of recognition. And that in a nutshell is referencing. Obviously we won't reference um, pictures we took, but you will reference journals. You will reference your textbook. You will reference internet articles. If you go through that um, reference guide, there's so many different types of references that you can use and information that you can use. If you forget everything I teach you today, remember Wikipedia is not an academic source. Repeat that. Wikipedia is not an academic source. So if we see Wikipedia in your reference guide or in your reference list, it's a no-no. Because any of you can write information on Wikipedia. It's not peer-reviewed information. Okay. Now with that being said, where can I find or you guys find your reference guide? So Hands up, who's on Canvas? Everybody happy on Canvas? Do you know or have you seen the library portal on your dashboard? Okay, so if you haven't, please go find it. You click on it, you will find this little picture in front of you. The Stadio library page, go read through it, very interesting. But when you scroll down, you will see these three buttons and then you click on writing and referencing. Click on it and it will take you to the reference guide page. Now with anything on Canvas, ladies at the back please, if anything on Canvas, if there's this little arrow next to underline with, it means it's a PDF document or it's a link to another platform. So you can literally just click on the Stardio reference guide at the top or the Stardio reference guide at the bottom and it will take you to your reference guide being your new base print. Okay, so print that, have it with you and make sure that you, from the get-go, understand how to reference, how to use different types of referencing, so that everybody will be happy at the end. Will you guys be able to find that? It's easy enough. Okay. Now we're getting, okay, and it looks like this. Easy enough. Now we're going to get to the key part of this lesson. So we have a few definitions. First one is plagiarism. Big word meaning don't steal somebody else's creative content or make it your own or provide or not provide authorship for them or recognition. So you said anything I said in this class and you made you said you said it, not me. Oh, that's a bit of you said me said. All right, so let's say Ms. Van Esbeck, being myself, said go to enjoy for lunch. And now all of you say to your friends go to enjoy for lunch, but you make it seem as if you thought of the thought that is plagiarism. Please do not share or um, take pictures, whole sentences, anything from a textbook, from a journal, and not give recognition to the author at the end of the day, because that is in a sense stealing. And yes, you will get zero for your assignment, and yes, there will be this, this and no disciplinary action taken against you. This is a very important thing. There can be legal action because we have copyright. All of you who have bought um, your textbooks already, so if you turn the page, the second page, you will find this whole, the C in a circle. That's the copyright emblem. 
So meaning that is the date it was published. So it is copyrighted. So you can't, if I did all of this, it's not the information. I don't know all of this. I don't make it up. I did give recognition to Priest and Gas, who is the authors of this textbook. So please do not plagiarize at any time. You won't put a picture on social media, or I hope you won't put a picture on social media and not give recognition to your best friend who took it or who else took it. So please do not plagiarize. But how can we make sure to not plagiarize? The very first one is we can use quotation marks. Now you can't copy an entire paragraph out of a textbook and just put it in quotation marks. That's not, no. If you have two or three words or a specific quote, put it in um, uh, quotation marks and then you obviously need to give us the page number of the source with your in-text reference. This is our typical in-text reference look. We're going to look at now. So Beekman, Dube, Port, Hater and Underhill. 2016, page 61, this is where I got the definition from. So yes, you may use direct quotation, and direct quotation marks, but not more than five or six words for one quote. Do, can you um, do quotations marks your entire presentation or your entire assignment? No, because what is the purpose of an assignment? We want to know, do you understand the work? So if you give me quotation marks and you literally just copy paste it, how am I supposed to know if you understand the work? Easy enough? Okay, so first one, quotation marks, then you need to paraphrase. Mix the words a little bit, mix the sentence, maybe start with another key important part, or let's say um, the sentence was the definition of plagiarism, like this. Now you mix it up a bit, a bit. now you say according to this entire, all these people, authors, Beekman, Dube, Port, Hitler, Underhill, 2016, plagiarism can be said to be when a person copies another person's work without giving them the proper recognition. See how I paraphrased the entire sentence now? You need to do that. Or just the easiest one, just use your own words. Refer to the paragraph or the um, statement or the journal or whichever source you're using and then tell us what they meant in your own words. What do you understand by um, reading this term or reading this paragraph? That is how we tend to not plagiarize. Because online, you will submit for turning in all of your assignments and it will give us a similarity score, meaning it's similar to your peers' work. So yes, we will know if you cheat. We're actually good at catching on on that. But it will also tell us if there's more than six or seven words directly copied from a specific source. And then it will be read, your entire um, assignment. And then if we literally click on the read, yes, I'm giving you a bit tips here, it takes us to that source. So we can see directly from where you copied. So if we tell you, please do not plagiarize, don't think we're stupid, or we don't know what we're talking about, we literally know what we're talking about. So this is a very serious matter. Are you going to get it right the first time? No. Practice makes perfect. Um, we, um, as lecturers, we have a few years of practice and start, some of us, even myself, still plagiarize here and then. Then my supervisor, I'm still busy with my studies, my PhD, then she tells me, watch out for this, watch out for this, and then you need to revise. So it is an ongoing process, but plagiarism is not or using the original source as is, not making it your own. So paraphrasing, where you rephrase with Ms. Angelique Jans van Rensburg this morning, she spoke about your verbs, your nouns, replacing those, can you remember? Woo okay, I hope you can remember. So how we replace words, what other verbs we can use, what other nouns we can use. So not just saying, according to all these authors, you can state something like this, these, um, Authors defines significant to, or you can use other words to make it sound more academically and not to use according to, according to, according to, over and over again. Because think about it, if we lecturers read 30 assignments and everybody reference exactly the same, we're going to go nuts, tend to do. So we will tend to, okay, please use another verb, please use another verb. So go through Ms. Um, Jans van Rensburg's presentation again. So just to know which verbs to use or how to, or even if you need help on that, my door is open. Just pop me an email and I will help you with that as well. 
OK, so that is plagiarism. Now, if I say reference list, you know what a reference list is? Please say yes. Have you used reference list in your studies, high school? So what do we do with the reference list? We put all the sources that we use to gather information for our assignment. You put at the end of your assignment. Now, a reference list, obviously, like I said, it consists of all the resources, all the websites, all the journals, all the articles, all the books that you use to get the information provided in your assignment. So if we ask you to get a definition or to, um, let's say, if we're doing marketing, um, define segmentation in your own words. You're not going to copy from one textbook. You're going to gather three or four definitions. You're going to make it your own and provide one um, definition that you summarize, and then you're going to give us the sources. And all five, six sources that you used for that definition, you're going to put in the reference list. Um, just a fun fact, when we read these, now again, I'm a research background, so typically when we mark a thesis or a big assignment, what I tend to do is I print the reference list. Then I take that reference list and I read through the article and then I tick off, yes, 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 to make sure that everything that is in your assignment corresponds with your reference list. That is a very, very important aspect. Don't put extra, don't put all the extra references. If you used it, then it should be in your reference list. Otherwise, what's the need? Okay. Good. Now, a little bit of tips. Online students, are you still with me? Can I get yes. A there we go. Thank you. Enthusiasm. Okay. So, just a few tips and tricks with the reference list. As I said, Wikipedia, it's not an academic source. Please do not use Wikipedia. We have something called ProQuest, as well as you can use Google Scholar. And then you know it is academically written sources if you need to make use of it. Again, ProQuest as well, and you can find that on the library um, on Canvas. And then we can also use Google Scholar. OK, make sure that all references, obviously this goes without saying, adhere to the Stadio reference guide. So in that reference guide, we're going to do five of the types of sources. Um, you need to make sure that it corresponds with how you reference a picture, how you reference a website, how you reference with those of you who are going to have law modules, how do you recite some of these acts. Um, it's always at the end of the document. It is never numbered. So you will have introduction one and then you have your questions. It, is as ne it never has a number in front of it and we do not use bullet points. Never ever bullet points or numbering your references. What, but what we do do is, can do, is it should be alphabetically presented according to the authors. I'm going to show you how to do a reference. We always start with the surname of the author. So this list will need to be alphabetically A to Z. Another fun fact, we are professional. You guys, we hope that you will be professional with all the documentation and assignments that you submit. So what do we do when we want to be professional? We justify our documents. Do we know what that means? We block our documents so that it would look like a block and not the wording at the end look like somebody draw it. So we justify our, present, our assignments, but we do not justify the reference list. Because if you justify the reference list, the hyperlinks, if you maybe make use of a um, website, won't be active anymore. So then I can go and check if this is the correct source or not. So you do not justify your reference list and you align it to the left of your page. Any questions? Can we get to the fun stuff? Everybody happy? Did I say everything? Yes. Obviously, at the end of the day, why do we need referencing? To avoid plagiarism. Okay. This is going to be something new for you guys, so pay attention. Um, I'm going to show you how to in-text reference. This is something you need to master on your own, but I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to do that. Um, on how to do that. So if there's one author, if there's two authors, if there's more than two authors, if you don't have a name of the author, and if there's no date, we're going to show you how to do that. 
quickly. And then in a paragraph, where do we use obscene to find these in-text references? And then we're going to move on to the references. Everybody happy? Okay, so I just want to check my time. No, we're still good. Okay, first thing first, before we in-text in -text reference um, authors, there's two different ways um, that we can either put a diagram or a picture or a table in our in-text referencing but we source these differently. So if we have a figure, this one's easy, the marketing mix. You have a figure, you will put this name of the figure, like figure 2.5 or figure 1, whatever it's worth its name, as well as the source below the figure. Very, very important. So the name of the source, the name and the name of the um, figure or the diagram, as well as the source below the figure. And the sources, needs to be in alphabetical order. Um, you will see I began with Elwood, Harrington, Sam, Yakubuki, and then Simon. It's just cutting off a little bit, sorry. So it should be in alphabetical order. So you can either write sources, with a double point, or when you adapt it, let's say you added another P because your research found that it was super important, or there's an extra X. Then you say adapted from, and then you list the sources. Okay, so figures is figures or diagram. You you name it and you source it below. Everybody happy? Can I go on? So where does the difference lie? So my things are moving around a bit. I will fix this before we send it to you guys. So when it comes to a table, the source is below, the name is above. So the name of the table, I will fix that before we send it to you guys. So the name of the table is above the table, and then the source is below. Okay. So if we ever ask you to provide information on a table, or you want to provide um, definitions in a table, or a review of something, um, then you will need to list the name of the table above the source at the bottom. Everybody happy? Online students, you understand? No more enthusiasm. All right, so this is two of the main key points. So figures or diagrams, even if it's a picture, if we ask you to cite a picture, showcase a picture with your description, you need to source it. And then it will be at the bottom, both the name as well as this in-text reference. And this is typically an in-text reference. Oh, that's what happens when you have a different computer. Okay, sorry about this again. Okay, so now with in-text referencing, I'm going to show you how to reference one author, two authors, more than two authors. Then sometimes, it's, if it's a website, you can't really understand who written it. Then we use the name of the website with the um, copyright act, or we use the term anonymous. So just a, um, a non with a full stop, and then the date. Obviously, a website won't have a page number, so it's just 2019 or 2016 or 2021. It doesn't have a page number. But if it is a textbook or it is a journal where there are page numbers, it will be 2019, um, double point, and then the applicable page numbers. If we can't find a date, we can't find that C with a circle, that copyright date, then we use term in full stop D full stop which mean or meant no date okay. but typically there is some sort of date involved you just don't find it so this is where we explore especially on websites we need to find these okay so that is just no authors and um, when it's not dated so let's quickly look at one author I know this is a bit small especially for those at the back I, I'm sorry so let's say the source is a textbook. You will see there George. So this is typically how you will cite it in the reference list. George, um, I think his name is Robert. And in 2019, the name of the um, book in italics, the sixth edition, it was in South Africa and then where? Um, South Africa and then a publishing house was Oxford University Press. So let's say this is a marketing tourism textbook and we spoke about the importance of marketing in tourism. Then in the beginning of a sentence, you can automatically start with George and then you never put, note, you never ever put the initials in text. 
So this is just the surname of the author. So you will have George 2019 on page nine. You see there's no space between the date and the page number as well. Very important. So that is in brackets. So George recommends, and then you continue with your story, paraphrasing it or whatever you want to tell them. Um, recommends that market segmentation is one of the key or most important aspects when it comes to understanding your target market or whatever the information is you read. So you can start or use this at the beginning of the sentence, but you can also use an in-text reference as part of a sentence. So marketing as stated by George, as defined, as found, as revised, there's so many verbs that you can use. By George can be defined as and then you continue with your own words. So we have a beginning and we have a middle part. And then if you want to tell a story, you write the entire what segmentation is, you can also use it at the end of the sentence, as part of the sentence. Just make sure that the full stop is after the reference. Okay, so you tell your entire story. When defining marketing orientation, one approach, um, the concept in different ways. So these are the different ways we elaborate on them and you put the source at the end. If all of the information in that section came from one source, then you use it at the end. And then obviously if it's a direct quote, you can use it in any of these forms. Direct quotes always need a page number. Always, 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 except when it's a website. Is it enough? Will we be able to do this? Are we sure? Online students, are you with us? Super quiet. It's fine. Okay. Now where the trick comes in is when there's two authors. So this is typically a source from a journal. So you have your surname, comma, you have the initial, full stop, the and sign, the other surname, comma, initial, full stop, the date, the name of the article, then you have the name here of a journal is not in italics, but the journal's name, not the article name, the journal's name is in italics, comma, and then we have all these lovely little numbers, which I'm going to tell you what those are now, but it is the volume, the edition, as well as your um, page numbers. So when we have two, two sources, maybe a textbook, maybe a website, maybe whatever it is, when you use it in text, meaning not in brackets, like in text, you, you write out and. So Van Rensburg and Slabbert. But as soon as you use it in brackets, you use the and sign. So this is truly very important. So when you write out Van Rensburg and Slabbert 2019, this is the page number and this is what they said, or you elaborate on it, it's fine, you use the and to write it out. But as soon as you use it in brackets, so you um, place it at the end of the sentence, you use the sign of and. Okay. And in your reference list, if you have more than two authors, make sure that is exactly with all the references that you either use and or you use the sign. Don't mix them up. Choose one in your reference list and stick with that one. Normally, the sign is better because you remember it more easily. So, this is just typically how we use two references. It's exactly the same if we use it at the beginning, the middle of the sentence, as well as the end of the sentence. But if it's in brackets, you use the sign. If it's not in brackets, you write it out. Is it enough? Now, this is the tricky one. But again, if you studied it once, you will remember it. If there's more than two authors, like this textbook here is a second year um, events marketing textbook. There's a lot of authors. The first time you use it in text, you need to write out all the surnames every single one of them and then at the end you will say and or if it's in brackets the sign so each and every person's surname 2019 or is this is 2019 textbook with the page number that's fine if it's in question one or in question two and you're using the same source again in question seven or eight of your assignment then you use the term et al so you only write the first author's name and then you use the word et al now, et al is always in italics, and there's a full stop after it, always. But when it's in brackets, you have a full stop as well as a comma, because there's always a comma in front of the year, the date. Okay, 
So the first time we use it, we write out all the authors, comma, 2019 page numbers, um, every single thing, and, or if you write it out and in, in the sentence, but as soon as you start to use that sentence, that reference again, you use the term et al, full stop. If it's in brackets, it's et al, full stop, comma, always in italics. Do we got it? And that's index referencing. Make sure you will be awarded marks for these. I'm not going to show you how to use academic writing and so forth. We will have a workshop or had a workshop on that, but you need to understand how to properly use these in text references. Maybe one author, two authors, or more than two or three authors. If we have the author, two of the exact same surnames in exactly the same here, then only we use the initials with the in-text reference if it's two different people. If it's one person, let's say I've um, wrote two articles in the same year, so it's Van Rensburg 2019, Van Rensburg 2019, but it's the same person. You will say Van Rensburg 2019A and Van Rensburg 2019B. But if it's two different authors, but they have the same surnames, you use their initials. Okay, any questions with in-text referencing? Are you with me? Are you sure? All right. Let's see what's next. Now we have the reference list, and that is that best friend that you downloaded or just downloaded or are going to download tonight. Um, there's quite a lot of different types of references and sources in there, but I'm going to do mainly five with you. And those are how to reference a book, how to reference an academic journal, and then we are in the life of technology. We all are using the internet for all of our sources, everything. So I'm going to show you how to reference an electronic article, an electronic dictionary, because everybody uses them, yes, as well as an image, if you need to provide an image, how to properly reference an image. Okay, so a book, an academic journal, an electronic article, as well as dictionary and image. I see we still have time, great. First one. So you will see with all of them, there's a recipe, and then we have an application. So how do you apply it? So that little asterisk is just a spacing. First thing, you list the author. So what is the surname of the author? Who wrote the book? So again, if I can take this one, it is Simon Priest and Michael Gass. That is the two authors. Don't get confused between an editor and an author. So we want to know who is the author of this book. It is Priest and Gass. So typically you would have, would have said is um, priest comma s full stop and gas comma m full stop if you use this. So what do we use? Author comma initials full stop. Then we have the year full stop. Then we have the title of the book in italics. All right, full stop again. Then we want to know where was it published. So was it in New York? It can be either international and all of these information you will find on the second page of a second or third page in a textbook, typically, yeah. Everything you will find, yeah. So we will find, um, there's the copyright data, it is a 2018 textbook, this one. So all the information will be found on the second page or at the, on the back of your textbooks. And then we want to know who is the publisher or the publishing house. Now it's typically Juta or Routledge. There's a few that's very, um, popular and then there's more lesser known one, ones as well. So we want to know where was it published, um, um, double print space as well as who was the publishing house. And then we ended off with a full stop. So typically this one, the author was um, Miss Julia Silvers. So it's Silvers, comma, you have the initial, full stop. If there's more than one initial, don't put a space between the initials. So it will be um, J, full stop, J, full stop, S, full stop. So if there's more than three names. A lot of the times authors only give one name, so it's easier. And then risk management for events in italics, full stop. This is a second edition. So if we have a third or fourth edition, we place it between the name of the textbook as well as the place where this was printed. And then it is in New York. It was printed there by a company called Routledge. And this is how you reference a book. Okay, so what I um, 
So tonight, if you already have some of the textbooks, and then just try to reference one of your textbooks. This will be a trial and error practice, so practice makes perfect at the end of the day, but this is the easiest one, a textbook. Okay, any questions? Are we happy? An academic journal. You will see in your, in your assignments, the lectures will typically ask you that you need to make use of at least two books or at least and at least two academic journals. So then you will go on your computer, go to the library, go on to ProQuest or Google Scholar and you will find an academically written article. Again, there's one or two authors. So we start with the surname, then comma, initial, full stop. Then we have the year when it was published. All of this will be provided. Typically, when you, you download, especially um, journals or articles, you can download this PDF. And at the top in the header, all of this information can be found or on the front page. So then you have the title of your journal or the article rather, title of the article, but it's not in italics. Full stop. What is then in italics is the name of your journal. So this one was Public Relations Review. Tourism management. Um, there's so many accredited journals. So you put in the name of the journal in italics, then a comma, space, and then that lovely little wording there. We start off with the volume. Again, this will be provided on the front page of an article or at the if in the header. So what volume is this? Volume, volume three, six, four, whatever. Then we put in brackets the number. Yes, there can be numbers to these as well. We can have a volume and a number. If you can't find a number, it's typically the first one. But search for the information in the header or the front page. Then we um, put a um, double print and then no spacing and then your page numbers of this article. Remember, for in-text referencing, you're only going to give us one page or the page number where you found the information. But in the references, you need to tell us exactly in that entire journal which pages on which pages can we found, find um, this article. And that is an article. So it's a volume, then in brackets the number, and then the page numbers at the end, and we end things off with a full stop. Any questions? Is it going over your head? Are we still awake? Are we sure? I'm going to make you just burpees. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so that is your academic journals. And now the one that, or those that you guys are more interested in, because everybody finds the information online, it is your, what are we starting with? Your electronic source. So this is a website. This is an article you, written, you read online. Whatever website it is that you need information on, or um, something that's provided on Media24, or whatever the website is. So we start again with your surname of the person who wrote the article and then their initials. If we can find a person's name or the author, we put the name of the website there. So then, the, or the name of the company of the website, you put their name there, full stop, the year. So if, if you're on a website, just scroll down, 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 and then you typically will find this here at the bottom, the copyright block. And it will say the C with the circle, and that is your copyright date. Yes, it can be 2016 to 2020 as well, because that is when it gets revised. So it's not only just one date, it can be more than one as well, more than one year or a specific period. Then you put the title of the article or the heading of the article, whatever it is you read, in italics. Okay. So if it's a press release that you found online, if it is uh, um, information or just an article, you put that in italics, full stop. Then you use the block brackets and you write online to make sure that we know that you find, found this information online. And then you write available from, capital A, capital A, available from, and then you paste the URL where you found this information off this website. You paste it in there. After that, you use block brackets again. You write accessed or downloaded, depending on if you're still online or if you downloaded the PDF version. And then you write the date out. So you start with the year and then the month and then the date. 
And fun thing here is we do not end it off with a full stop again. So it's just that blocks. Any questions? Is it that difficult? Actually, if you remember the recipe, then you can do literally anything, any type of reference, especially when it's electronic referencing. So you start off with the author, the initials, uh, the surname and the initials, or the website's name, or the organization's name. What is the article that we wrote, um, Fred? Three daily habits of peak performance, according to Mr. Michael Phelps himself. That was the article's name. And then we said it was online, available from you provided a URL because yes, I will be clicking on it and making sure that it is a proper um, proper source. And then you tell me when that you access these. Okay, do not lie and say you started two months earlier with your assignment because I can see you didn't. So no. um, make sure that you use the proper and the correct date on that as well. So if you know this recipe, the rest will become easy especially when you have online journals, online images, online edit, um, dictionaries, and so forth. Everybody happy? All right. All righty. Okay, so there we have your electronic sources with regards to uh, um, you guys procrastinating the entire holiday. So if you want to make use of a dictionary, maybe the Merriam M, Webster, we have the Oxford Dictionary. There's quite a lot of dictionaries that you can find online. Again, please do not use Wikipedia. But then it looks a little bit different. So we will use either the surname, if it's a person and they define it, or we will use the name of the um, dictionary. So maybe Oxford Dictionary, Marian and where Marian and Webster. Um, we put a spacing, then the date, when it was the copyrighted date. Then we will actually provide the name of the term that you searched. So that you search the term segmentation, project management, project mapping, um, whatever it is you're going to study. So what word that you search, and then it looks exactly the same further on, like any electronic source. Provide us online in brackets, available from, put the URL there and when that you access it. Okay, so you just provided instead of the title of the, um, article that you wrote or written, then it is the name of the word that you searched. Okay. You guys are killing me. Smile a little bit. Okay, so it is just the name that you searched for. And now the very last one, this one you need to mark a clue up and to remember. If you even need to provide a picture, even if it's on a presentation, we need a source for that picture. It works exactly the same as any of the um, online sources. So in text, you will typically write the author's name and the year because it's an online, so there's no page numbers. Or you will provide us with the company or the organization's name like this one, White Shark Diving Company. Because there's no author, they are the author of the website where I found the pictures. Um, the intent, I love, <laughs> I love sharks. Okay. So then in the reference, you will either use the surnames again with the initials, or you will use the name of the website, the copyright date, the title of the image. So what did you search? Did you search shark cage diving? Exactly the same as when we do an online dictionary. What word did you search? What was your keywords that you searched for? Online, you provide us with the URL, and then when it was accessed. But it's not as easy as it may seem. Can I go on? Are you writing down? Let me show you. So I want to go shark cage diving. Lacquer. Type in shark cage diving. Whom of you love sharkies? Who wants to come with me? Okay, we'll have an excursion. Okay, so shark cage diving, we typed it in. We are looking for a picture, but remember we need to give recognition to the author or the person who took this picture. You decide that sharky, let's name him Steve. Is the one for my presentation or for my assignment. So you click on CV here, and then this little block to the right will open for you. But it doesn't end there. You need to click on that picture again. So it will take you to the original source. So who actually uploaded this picture to Google? Or where can it be found? So if you double click on CV here again, it will take you to 
the white shark diving company because initially they were the persons who uploaded this picture to Google. You will find the link at the top of your page. Do not use the link that you will find here. Obviously, you will find a link at the top of this. Do not use it. After clicking, double clicking on Stevie here, then only you will find the proper link, the proper link of the website. That is the link that you use. If we find a link that just takes us to Google, I'm going to be, ah, okay, this source isn't correct, so I'm not marking it because which of these pictures did you actually choose and why? So you need to double click on Stevie, go to where it was originated from or the picture originated from, find a link, and then, ta-da, this is where the picture was first uploaded. So then you have the author, it is the White Shark Diving Company. If you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, this one um, would have said that it is copyrighted by the White Shark Diving Company, 2016 to 2020, there's the date. What is the picture's name? Shark Cage Hooker Dive. There we can go, there we go with that. We provided the link, date of access. So in a nutshell, that is how it will look then. White Shark Diving Company, the date, Shark Cage Diving Online, available from accessed. So remember, we provide the word that we search for, shark cage diving. Good. Okay. Any questions? Because that is it from me. Okay, that's just my references. See, that's how it's supposed to look. Academically, it is according to alphabetical order. No full stops after the brackets. Everything is there that needs to be there. It is not justified. And that is typically how a reference list needs to look. Any questions? Are we still awake? Yeah. Are we sure? Yeah. You're going to need it for the next one. I'm no, just kidding. Um, but truly, if you have any questions with regards to referencing, you can see I love referencing. Um, don't hesitate to email me on Canvas. There's this lovely function called your inbox on your left side. And if you let you just start typing a name, you will or Canvas will give you all of the authors or anybody you can contact. So either contact me on Canvas or you can just send me an email as well and I will help you. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gents. Thank you, those online. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm not sure who's going to um, do the next session, but I believe a link was sent to you guys. But have a lovely break in the meantime. Thank you. Eh, uh, boss.